I'm sure he'll be, although he, w he won't want to get there through merit, order of merit, he'll, uh, I think he'll have no option, even if he doesn't win one, that he'll, he'll be promoted to the Pro Series for next year. Yeah, well, he finished 35th last year. He's going to be second in the rankings right now, and he's still in the Challenger 2. Both players are, so they've got more work to do this weekend. But some high Tom Jones will be on. Well, let's turn our attention to this final, then. Phil Harrison with the opening break. Parks the cue ball in the middle of the table, makes the ball. He gets first opportunity. It's still a race to eight frames. 50 minutes on the match clock. And you have to say, from what we've seen in the tournament so far, what we've seen over the course of the last few months, Tom starts the match as favourite. But favourites in these matches, we've been saying it all weekend long, are so marginal. But he's carrying the confidence. And even though Phil keeps winning, every time I interview him, he's, he's downplaying how he's feeling out there, that he's still really struggling with the cue ball. Still doesn't feel like he's playing anywhere near his level. And I mean, his level is exceptional, so you can understand why he says that. Yeah, but um, I think with Phil, what you're going to get is, you know, well, you sort of know what you're going to get with Phil. He's, he's really steady and he'll stick around all match. And then, like you've seen in the last couple of rounds, he's managed to pip, pip his opponent at the post. So I think he's got it on his hands here with Tom in the form he's in. But look, Phil's a world-class player and he's not performed at all in the last year and a half. I think since he actually won, was it the Champions League? No. The, the Masters. The Masters, sorry, that he won. Yeah, but since then, he, then he's sort of not really done anything. So it's a bigger shock to anyone. Um, it's not a shock to anybody that he's here. And he should be here more often. Yeah, I think the, the shock is that he hasn't been here before rather than the, that he is here. That's a lovely positional shot. Yeah, I'm not sure if you played it quite as cute as that, but you'll take he, it. He, he's, he's, he's perfect. And he has been very critical of his cue ball. That's where all the problems have been lying for him in these matches up till now. And I think for Phil to to really have a, a decent chance in the match, not playing it down because. Look, like I said, Phil's a world-class player, but I think he needs to get in the match. I don't think he can come from behind against Tom and, and win. I think that if Tom gets two to three in front, he's going to really um, stamp his authority on the match and probably run away with it, you know. But Tom's playing with such confidence and yeah. breaking with such confidence that yeah. it just you feel like he's going to keep giving himself some big chances. So Phil needs to... I know it's still the opening frame, but it just feels like Phil needs to stay with Tom. Yeah, for sure. Oh, very good opening visit to the table. This is for Phil. It's not just about making a break clearance, but making a break clearance where he's very clean and clinical through it. you got to think that, again, when he played Dave McNamara, I think he was the final shot away from going out. Yeah. So... Oh, that break is... Oh. He's actually been a bit unfortunate because the black, literally the last ball rolling, has been tied up by the yellow... Uh, by the red, sorry. Just below the the eight ball spot so as you can see the red tracking down now and it's just bumped the bumped the eight ball into the into the red and gone safe so he will have to nudge it out because it doesn't go nowhere but he has got a, a ball there to to play into it the one to the left of the uh, left of the red the one that is above now that would be my option to go into it I don't know if he, he tried to land flat on the cushion then where he could top and just brush off the red to open the eight, but as it stands now, he, he's taking his, his break ball away. So he, he's got to put a reroute here and he's got to play a good shot. Just have the one to the other bottom right-hand corner. Okay, it's a bit further away and a bit trickier to get that cannon, but it, it's also a chance. It could come to the point where he leaves the, the yellow under, well, the only yellow in the bottom half of the table and, and then land underneath the eight and take it into one of the top pockets. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not sure if it goes in the top left pocket, but it, it definitely goes in the top right pocket. Is he going into it now? So he'll be checking it and trying to hit the, trying to hit the eight ball full. Right, so he went the other way and, and flicked the red. Dangerous shot, though, because yeah, if he catches was. anything full there, he's, he could stick on it and be on nothing. Yeah. 
I think he'll take his medicine on the eight ball. He'll, he'll probably land anywhere on the on the line of the yellow he's potting now, but anywhere up the top half of the table, just in that gap between the two reds. To and we need this to pull up. Needs that to pull up, and he comes around to have a look. And well, body language tells us he's okay. So he'll pick his point out here on the table and he'll know where that he can't go anywhere to the left of that. Probably looks around a foot off the side cushion. So whether he chooses to screw it, he might use the cushion, he might not, depending on his personal preference here. Oh, how good's yeah. that? I mean, it's as good as he can land on it. Yeah, that was the line he wanted. So anywhere up to where his hand is now is okay, really. But yeah, he's, he's perfect on it. Oh, what a start. What a start to this match. Both Phil Harrison and, and Tom Cousins get underway with a break clearance. Um, because you want to be in the deeper end of the tournaments. So he's hit a good break there. And he's made good. one, made two. Uh, I, think the reds are, I think the reds are the balls here. There's two reds on the top right-hand side with a yellow there. But I think he can play one and nudge the other one out or maybe even nudge the yellow away. And apart from that, he's got really nothing to do I think he can play it first shot either just bump the red to the side rail so he leaves it up down the line or if he can screw past the red he'll screw into the yellow so he can either play it first shot or he can play it second shot Oh, if he's sitting on that red, he's on nothing. Yeah, that, that was a bad shot for me because he was relying on a bit of luck when he didn't need to. If he'd have played it softly, he could have bumped the red to the side rail and he'd have been on the red that's over the left centre as his next ball. Playing it the way he played it, he sort of like was relying on luck when he didn't really need to. And he's passed the frame up to, to Tom instantly. Yeah, you can tell that by his reaction. Yeah, he's tried to come off the rail and and wedge back up to the red, but he's he's uh, he's left a window there for Tom, and he's left him actually straight on his first shot into middle pocket. And look at the yellows now. I mean, Phil always wears his heart on his sleeve when he's playing, but I think he knows more than against most players. You know, the form that Tom's in, that he just can't afford to make mistakes like this. The chance he had there. You know, it was quite a big one for a player of his level and the mistake with the safety as well. Yeah, he's, um, he's, he's, he's sort of gave his serve away straight away to Tom. Yeah, which is dangerous. <clears throat> well, it's probably going to be 3-1 now. Yeah, that's how you feel, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? So Tom's just got to play one good shot, really. His, uh, his last yellow that's, uh, that's underneath the eight ball and then he'll run round off two cushions and back into the centre of the table pretty much where the yellow is now that he's about to pop that sort of area so just run this through two or three inches maybe maybe more and then it's a natural angle just to to come round off two cushions with a touch of touch your left hand side Yeah, no surprise to see Tom make that clearance. He's probably the best player in the world at the moment. Look at that break. He's crunched them and that's that's criminal how it's dry, to be honest. Like you can't hit the ball better than that. If you look at the cue boy, it's directly up the centre of the table, straight back down into the middle of the table again. Cue ball stops virtually in the centre. And nothing even threatened a pocket. No. Crazy. Yeah. Phil won't get many of these opportunities, so he needs to take them when they come, and it's a good one. Yeah, and to be fair, after the shot that Phil played in the, set, in the last frame, he didn't really deserve a dry break from Tom. No, you, yeah, that's it. If, if you, you know what I mean. You, yeah, you, you almost you, expect it not to come. Yeah, yeah. 
Like you said, you know, you felt that mistake could be 3-1. Yeah. So yellow's he could, the he choice. Could, yeah, he could take reds or yellows here, but really there's, there's, there's zero to do. <laughs> yeah. It really is. The only shot he can, he's half got to play is the one that's on the, over the bottom right-hand pocket. I think if he can get on that after his next two shots, so he'll play the yellow in the bottom, then probably follow it again. Or he might leave that till last. Yeah, I quite like leaving it till last because you've got the one yeah. Yeah, that he's left down there as you're connected to it. Yeah, so he's going to play middle, then the yellow into the ball pocket, screw back down. Probably take the, the yellow he's closest to now into the into the opposite middle. And then it'll be bottom bottom left, bottom right, and the eight ball in the right in the left centre. So he wants to make sure he gets his pace right. He wants to be a fraction low. He's, he's no good for short here, so he'll basically want to be screwing back to where his hand is now. It's just okay, I think. Yeah, could have done with another yeah, turn yeah. of the cue ball. <coughs> I think he's fine there. Oh, well, it wasn't. It was. It was a touch low, but he's played a good recovery shot there to land straight, and and now he just wants to make sure that. He lands in the, on the right angle here, so he doesn't have to do nothing with the cue ball. He's pinched the pocket. See that there? Yeah. Pushed it into the right, into the left hand side of the pocket or the right hand side of the pocket as he looks at it. I think he can just stun in between both the yellows now, uh, both the reds. Sorry. Yeah. Always looked a very good chance off the break, as it normally does off a of Tom Cousins break. Yeah. It's just it was Phil Harrison that had the chance off it. And he took it. He needed that after the mistake in the previous frame. So our last 16 lineup is complete. I'll run through that a little bit later on, but that's all for tomorrow morning from 10 o'clock onwards. He's hitting that break well in this match. Yeah. First two he parks. This one, it just goes a bit further up the table, but still right up the middle of the table. And look at this leaf. Beautiful. He can, he can basically be told what colour to take there if he can take reds or yellows yeah doesn't really make a difference either way yeah play worse colour and have no issues whatsoever yeah the only thing with the yellows is you've got the ball on the on the bolt line that's pretty on well it's on its own in the top half of the table it might be a, a small issue to him but apart from that really there's there's not a lot going on yeah he's going to take yellows probably get rid of that ball that you talk about straight away So he's only got really one ball here. Um, I think the yellow that's above the eight ball goes into the bottom right pocket. So he doesn't have a connector to that pocket though, really. He, he could play on it now. Oh, the, oh, you mean it goes through the gap of the yellows? I yeah. see. Yeah, I was only thinking it didn't go. Yeah, I think he's. I think he might have actually played on that half-heartedly then, um, and he, he pulled out the shot because he's far short there because well, he, he was never playing to to leave himself hampered, so. Yeah, this is awkward. Yeah, I'll put my hand behind the reds, yeah. I think that's a better. Yeah, very easy to foul if you're in between. Nicely done. So I think it might be a drop the ball into the bottom right and then take the one into the bottom left and top through the gap of the eight ball and the yellow. And he's got a good blocker there. He's got the red ball that's on the on the left hand side there to to save the cue ball so yeah, he's going to play the shot that i said and and top straight through the gap and he's got a big target here. he's going to he's going to try and play the yellow uh, the the cue ball directly into the red perfect really nice yeah, lovely Clearance this time, Phil Harrison. I 
was about to say that one can't be dry. It was even bigger than the previous one. It's not a nice split though. He's not got a nice split at all, I don't think. Yeah, top left, left look messy. It threatened to be a dry break for a while, didn't it? It did. Yeah, he's got a little bit of work to do here. He's. He, I think there's actually a route out on reds without moving anything. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. Originally, I was looking at yellows, but yeah, as you look at reds, they look pretty comfortable, really. Just a little congested area top left, but he's got one to connect to the other, and then it's just getting the angle to get back out. But there's plenty of room. Yeah, and, and, he, and even really, if he doesn't have to get back out, as long as he's straight on the red and he can top forward, he can then take the ball that he's actually bridging over now into the bottom right pocket. He might even play the bump shot. And yeah, bump he's left so it. much angle, it looks like he is. Yeah, bit of a careless shot really there by Tom, because he didn't need to play the bump shot. And if he hits the underside of it and knocks it up the table and the, and the cue ball into the centre of the table, but I, I'd, I'd say that Tom would judge this quite more. Perfectly. He doesn't get as, bad, he doesn't <laughs> get as good as that, does it? <laughs> nearly went wrong because he nearly potted it. Yeah, he that would so have well. been a bit of a, a dangerous shot, really, because if it would have gone in, then he would have been in a bit of me a bit of a trouble. So what looked messy at the start, he's now done all the heavy lifting in the frame. Not that there was actually much once he'd worked it out, and these are all there for him for another break clearance. Yeah, sometimes when you when you break the balls and you look at the set. And, and you see a, a couple of problems, but then the other set really is not too hard. Like I was looking at yellows originally, and then all of a sudden, when you actually look at reds, it, it's a simple finish. The layout sort of almost made you look at yellows because the yeah. yellows looked like it had the control of the top left corner. Yeah, yeah, and, wh and that's where the cue ball was as well, so. See, it's a little bit awkward here. It, it, I think he should just drop it in, but and take the eight ball in the centre, but then there's a case for screwing up into the yellow above the eight ball. He didn't want it any thinner than that though, because he could have slipped behind the yellow then. But a nice finish anyway, all the same. Yeah, very good from Tom Cousins. Yeah, and if you look at the top half of the draw, every single person there will be looking at that thinking, I'm the favourite to get to the final here. Yeah. <laughs> So you've got Ben Flack and John McAllister, Callum Singleton, Rob Bourne, Mark Fleming, Fernandez, and Fitzy against Davis. Uh, F uh, Fleming and Fernandez are actually in the bottom half of the draw. Oh, Fitzy, oh, Fitzy and Davis are the other, other one in the bottom half of the draw is Shepard and Waddingham. Right, OK. Who you'd have to say, right, so going on that, the yes. winner of that match does become the favourite to come through that section. Yes, yeah. Back, back to this match. He parked the cue ball perfect then. If you look at that, he, he yeah. hit the pack, jumped it back a foot and, and stopped it dead. But but it's dry and this gave Tom an opportunity. A little bit more congested. This is trickier than the previous one, which looked messy. But, but is it? Because he's got the plant first shot and the stun into the red. And if he kicks the red out first shot, then all of a sudden the reds are easy. So he's just got to mind his work really because when he, when he stuns into the red, He's going to hit the yellow. If he hits the yellow, he doesn't want to push it down to the, the eight ball and the red. Yeah, well controlled. Yeah. That shot's tricky, but he's on it. Yeah. It's tricky because of the cue one, not necessarily the pot. I think he'll actually play like the skill shot here and not because it, he needs to play the skill shot just to hold the cue ball as a, as a more of a controlled shot. So I think he'll pot the red into the left centre and just stun in, into the yellow that's, that's next to him. If he, he might be able to slide past it, actually. Oh, that's exactly as you called. Just flicks off it, puts himself right in the mix where he wants to be. So with the, the, uh, the red that's over the bottom right-hand pocket, although it looks the connector to the eight ball, I think he's one on the rails, the connector to the eight ball. Unless, do you think the one by the eight ball is easy enough just to screw past it? Yeah, possibly. If but not, I mean, because I looked at it and thought, oh, that could be awkward to get out from it. Unless he plays the one on the rail, second to last, comes out where the yellow is in the middle of the table, and then plays the red and goes underneath the eight ball and takes the, black, the eight in the, in the same pocket as the final red. Yeah. That's probably a shot. Looks like that's the plan. So yeah, he just wants to clear the yellow. As long as he clears the yellow, he's fine.
Oh, nearly missed that one. As wide as it could be. <coughs> Pocket plays generous, but just plays generous the other way. I think he might just... Well, it, it all depends whichever he fancies here, really. If it's as straight as it looks on the camera, then he'll probably drop it in dead weight and take the eight into the opposite corner. If he's not, then he'll just pop it across and take the eight into the same pocket. Yeah, really nice and simply done. So another finish that looked Great. tricky, that Tom's made look simple. Scratch at the head. Don't blame you. So it's happened again. He's gone one in front and he's got a chance to, to well, hold his serve and go too clear. And it's come dry. So He's congested in the break area though. Look at that. All of them up there. Yeah, it is. But I think there's a case for reds. I think, I think they're a little bit easier than they look. It all depends how that red on the right hand side is. You know, the two that are together under the yellow. I think that if the top one goes, then he's got a great chance here. A lot better chance than it looks anyway. Assuming with Bayer's reaction that this one to the top right doesn't go, but looks like it does. Yeah, no, I think it does. it does. I don't know why. Uh, I, I don't know what he was trying to play there, really, because he looked like he was disappointed to pot them both. But why hit it so hard then? Yeah, but it, it looks to be perfect here. I think he's been fortunate there, but I think he's perfect. Because he's so close to the red, he can spin it in, so he can actually play it as wide as he can and hit it with right-hand side, and, and, the, and the spin transfers onto the red, and it, he'll be able to pot it into the into the thick side of the pocket. So whether he takes it now or he takes it next shot after this one, it doesn't really matter. He can definitely. Oh, oh no! That one's gone wrong for sure. And he can't pot it from there. Yeah, the last one he shook his head at was wasn't sure if it had, but this time it really has. To be honest. That was a crazy shot because he was on it the shot before. So why not play it? And then there was a window. Yeah, because if he plays the cue ball into the yellow, he's guaranteed to be on the one he's just played and <laughs> yeah. get out from there comfortably. And then you've got the red over the bottom left. So he is still on the one over the bottom left, but now he has to come up with a very big positional shot. Oh, he's used his extension as well. He's going to have to hit it. He's on it. I think he's on it. I think he's yeah, on that. Looks like he is. He's just questioning the extension, but has used it. Yeah, so we won't know really until we gets down. I think he's on it personally. Yeah, it does look like he is from the overhead. It just looked like he could see plenty. Well, he is playing it with left hand side. So that means he's on it clearly. Oh, we hit the yellow. Massive moment in this match, huge moment. The standard that Tom is playing at, you cannot afford to make mistakes, and that is a big one from Phil. And in a matter of moments, Tom Cousins is going to go too clear. Daylight for the first time in the final. And Phil's got a massive break coming up, mm. because really, the match is relying on one shot. If he doesn't break and clear up the next frame, or at least win it, and take control of after his break, then I uh, you know it's a bit premature, but the writing will sort of be on the wall for, for him. Yeah, it could feel a long way back. I know it, I know exactly what you're saying, but Tom's just having a leisurely not floating around the table. His mannerisms around the table are fantastic to watch. Low stress.
continues to be flawless in the match. Yeah, it's a massive achievement, you know, because, <coughs> like we say, it's all the best players in the world are here. So, and the field moving to 96, it's um, it's unbelievably hard to to uh, win the titles. Hot, well, twice as hard as it was last year. Yeah. So. Well, we said this was a big break. I think. And he's made a ball. Just, just, just. His heart would have been in his mouth then for a second. Yeah, he may have felt this was a dry one. Does get one of the last balls. Comes round into the middle. Yeah, that red just fl um, flicked off the yellow. And, and to be fair, he's got a very good, comfortable finish, really. Yeah, imperatively takes this out now. This is a must. A must, yeah. Fulfill. Not a huge amount that can go wrong here, though. He's connected up all pretty nicely, all in the open. Yeah, he just needs to make sure that he uh, composes himself and doesn't do anything silly. When they're so easy, sometimes you you get a little bit careless. And you can you can maybe run out of position half a ball and then it escalates quickly. But in a final like this, if you're not um, fully switched on and focused, then you're never going to be. So I fully expect him to take these out. You should play the yellow into the same pocket. Yeah. <coughs> I didn't really have too much on to my uh, ranking this weekend, <laughs> unfortunately. No, still th sitting in third place, though. But uh, Well, Tom, Tom Tom jumps me, doesn't he, I think? If he wins. He stays below you if he loses. Right, OK. Come on, then, Phil. <laughs> 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 no, look, the, the way the rankings are, to be honest, with the top eight players, whoever wins the event jumps you uh, virtually. It's very tight. All year, so it, I think the rankings sort of up until... Maybe Pro Series 7, 8, 9 and 10. OK, so Phil completed that previous clearance to take it back within one. So Tom hits him even harder. And another big split for Tom Cousins. Yeah, lovely, lovely split. And good control of the cue ball. One thing we've noticed with Tom and the cue ball, he doesn't control the cue ball as well as he used to, and as well as the other, likes of the other big breakers like yourself and, and Gareth Potts. But in this match, he absolutely is. He's getting that right down the middle every single time. For me, when I'm breaking the balls, I feel like I could hit them probably 40% harder than I do. I'm trying to put more timing into it than speed. Yeah. I can like grip the cue harder and hit it harder, but... I don't feel like I need to, but obviously today I needed to because it clearly <laughs> didn't work. But but um, I think Tom's using a bit of like it sounds weird, but he's like snapping his wrist through the through the break. He's like when he's coming into the hitting the cue ball, is is really accelerating. So he might be pulling back slower and then driving through yeah. the cue ball a lot harder than say like I'd go back at 40% and go through at 60%. He's coming back at 30 and then hitting it at like 80 or 90. And you can tell because of the package just literally blowing up. Oh, it's absolutely exploding on him. But the key is for Tom, when he gets that cue ball under control, it's even more dangerous. Yeah, there's, there's definitely a massive skill to it. And although anybody can break the balls hard and and smack them as hard as they want, really. But th there's a skill to hitting them at the, at the speed that we hit it at and hit the, get the cue ball where we want to get it to as well. Yeah, they're really in. Didn't control the cue ball quite as well. Not as much power through the pack. Wasn't a bad break, but not a great one either. And comes up dry. Messy, bottom left-hand corner. He'll be happy with that dry. Yeah. 
that's one of them dry breaks that you're thinking, if I'm Phil here, I'm thinking, well, I'm glad it's gone dry because I didn't really want to go for him anyway. And uh, and I think the, the way that Tom's feeling, he's going to go for them. Not saying that he can't get them because it'll probably make me eat my words, but I feel like the way the balls are, Tom doesn't need to do anything here. I think he's, what he's trying to do is stun into the red, make the red hit the yellow full ball. The yellow then will hit the red half ball and come back into the middle of the table. So it might sound a bit crazy what I've just said, but... It's not it, really worked. It's no. half, the half opened it from the reds, but not really in an open area. Yeah, the red that he uh, actually hit into the yellow, cannon the yellow back onto the side, so... Little flick off the red, maybe not as intended, but it worked out beautifully. Has he got a slight angle here that he can uh, play the stun shot and, and come back up into the yellow and the red on the on the left hand side? Doesn't look like, like it. A, like a, a hard, not a screw, because you don't want it as flat. He wants it like a. It's hard to hard to explain the shot, but the one to, to basically get into his bad ball. Yeah, I'm not sure of the angles Extension there. Called. He's got to do something. He's got to got to try and figure out something. And he's got nine seconds, eight, seven, six. He needs to hurry up. He's gonna. Yeah, he's taking this into middle pocket. I think this is a big shot. Yeah, it is. But look, the two balls on the left hand side for Phil don't plant down the rail. I know he's got balls to break into it, but I actually fancy Tom for this. To be honest, I don't. I don't see him missing the pot. I know, I know it's a very hard one. It's where... Oh, it's only half come out. And oh, if he sticks on this one, he's on nothing. I don't know if he's completely stuck. Oh, he's pretty close. I don't know, you know, he might be able to get back into this, you know. Can he thin it? Thin it into middle? Come off the side and the bottom rail and go back into his bad ball? Yes, he can. Needs a bit of luck. Where's it going to finish? He's not going to be on it. He's going to be on a double. He is going to be on a double. Oh, wow. He'd have took that for sure. Yeah, 100%. He's had to dig deep here in this visit. It hasn't been clean, but this double to go one frame away and the break. And this is, for me, this is match ball. For me, this is match ball. You're eight minutes on the clock. He's three in front, and he's got two breaks to win. Oh, he knew it as well. See, he sort of clenched his hand then. As soon as he hit it, he knew he was thin on that. Yeah, he probably knew how big that yeah, was potentially as well. Uh, yeah, he, he was fully aware that was virtually match ball. Oh, his first mistake oh. in the match. But you said it when Phil broke dry. This is one of those that's not the worst to break dry on. And he has had to wait, but he has got the chance to come to the table. Not a particularly great chance to immediately counter clear, but he'll be happy to be at the table. 100% because if he, if he wasn't, he'd have lost it. Yeah, true. <laughs> but, <laughs> but this is a must now for Phil. An absolute must that he, he wins this frame. Because if he doesn't win the frame, the clock is chewing down all the time now. And if Tom was to manage to win it and there'd be less than six minutes, then, then he's, he's in bad trouble. I don't think the clock's actually changed. Stop the pause clock, please. I don't think the clock's changed there because he had 30 seconds on that shot. He had more than 15 seconds on that shot. Yeah, there may be a slight issue. The tech referee has asked for the clock to be stopped, but they're just going to check what's going on with the clock. But, yeah, Stop. it's... Uh, that's all sorted now. It's back up and running. Seven minutes left here. And there's also the security of... Oh, what a hit. Ooh. There's also the sort of, the, the thing with Tom and taking on that tough finish is the fact that 
it's not that it's a free go, but it's it's a Phil Harrison break, and he always knows that he's going to be one worse ways one ahead and the break with not a huge amount of time left on the oh. clock. <coughs> Phil will hope that's the safety element of this frame. I, I, th I think there might be. Si I think the clock's wrong. You know, I think there might be 16 minutes left. So, and you're right, Jack. It was 16 minutes <coughs> and something left. 10 minutes got taken off for some reason. There, that was easy fix though. We're back to where we should be. Tom's got half. A I was going to say half a chance then. Um, obviously, he had to do a big swerve, but if he'd have caught the rail before the yellow, there was a big pocket over the bottom right. But like you say, that completely changes the whole match there. We was thinking we're ticking into the five minutes to go. It, it caught, well, it caught me completely off guard. It, it, well, it, <laughs> Quite it rightly. did me, like I say. We, I thought, originally, I thought there was 22 minutes uh, the last time I looked, and nothing really as bad's happened. This has been the first frame where there's probably been four visits each, five visits each. So, um, yeah, it's not burned too much time. But um, Bill now has them absolutely as he wants them. Shouldn't take too long to run through these, get back within one. I do actually think that the, the match will finish before the clock. Yeah, even, the even if Phil was to win. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm not anticipating the match clock. It would come into play in terms of there will potentially could be some clock management required, depending on who's in front. But I don't anticipate finishing on the clock. I think somebody will get to eight, especially Tom's two away at the moment and the speed that he plays at could happen quickly. Didn't see that coming. It may not be too much damage done, but he's given Tom a chance to hurt him here. It's a free go at this, really. He'd, he would have written the frame off. Do you think he's tempted to think of the safety, or is he going to go? Um, uh, it's, you could I dip think, behind the eight ball here. I think the safety is the shot, but look, he's, vir he's virtually lined him up for a straight double. Tom will get close to this if he doubles, but really, he should be playing the snooker. And he is. Has he got it? No, he's not played it great. He's got the snooker, but he's got the, uh, he's got the swerve. He needed to get quite close to that eight ball, make it a tough one. Yeah, he'd be disappointed with that, Tom Will. I think if he'd landed another inch up, then he'd have made um, Phil have to play a good shot. Not that he'd have missed the ball anyway, I think he'd have hit the ball over the top pocket. It's whether he'd have potted it and whether he'd have got the cue ball out. Because obviously where the red is there, if you put that cue ball over the top pocket, it's a tricky shot down the line. Whereas now he's sort of got a... It's, not a, shot, it's not a shot to nothing, but he's sort of covering the pocket anyway. And really the pace he's going to be playing at, it's going to be difficult to miss this. Yeah, Tom sort of missed a half trick there, really, after after Phil gave him an opportunity. Oh, very <coughs> intriguing frame of ball that lasted a little frame. bit longer than it probably should have done, but it does go Phil Harrison's way. And Cuba was close to going in, but others have flown in. And an interesting layout here. It depends where the eight ball's gone. If the eight ball's okay, which it looks like it is, then yellows are quite comfortable. I think he can pop the yellow into the bottom left, well, and then take the yellow off the red, move the red out of the way, and then all of a sudden he's got two yellows there. But Tom's seen it different at the table, that must not be the case then. I think he likes the reds because there's only one red and it does go and he can play on it straight away. Yeah. Once this one's out of the way, reds become a better option than yellows. Yeah, definitely. So, 
initially I thought he'd take the yellow off the off the red and open the middle of pocket up, but maybe that shot's not quite on. Those no, three are in a line not. together. I think he'll take the one closest to the middle pocket now and, and go around the back of the reds. Yeah. I'll try and drop down to these one, these two down here now. Yeah, and he's played it mm, as good as... Maybe another roll would have been perfect. Yeah, absolutely. I think he might take the red into the same pocket again now. Yeah, that's fine. So now he just wants to be as close to the yellows as he can. Really, as straight as possible into the middle pocket. He's got a little short jabby one here, so he needs to... Yeah, that's ball in hand. Yeah, very nice. Perfect. He's going to be he's going to be right up behind the eight ball. He's took them out very, very well and very quickly. Very good. Oh, he's made a ball, so he's going to get the chance to put that pressure on. But it's a little bit of a messy split in the triangle area. You can see the big difference in power between the two players. Phil isn't going with his full-on power break. He can hit it more powerfully than that, but he loses the cue ball, which is why he doesn't do it very often. Yeah, he's got to develop a few balls here, so... Has he got a, is there a case here for playing, playing the red and trying to top into the, the pack of balls here? I think he's got a slight angle onto the one in the bottom pocket. If he's straight, then obviously he can't. No, he's too straight. So now he's going to play. And he's going to play his shot here now. So it's all on this shot really. And what he wants to do really, he wants to hit the red and the yellow at exactly the same point. Got the yellow. yellow. First. Does that red go? He's been, I think he's been fortunate. Well, it, his immediate reaction was disgust, but if that red goes, it's perfect. <clears throat> it couldn't be yeah. more perfect. I think he's been fortunate there. Uh, but look, what well, that that means it goes. <laughs> that <laughs> means it goes. Phil, need, he's got an extension still. I don't know why he's. Well, he's oh. played on it, so yeah, it not goes. sure why the grimace, but yeah, yeah I think he might grimace better. again. He still might have one more grimace, maybe. Yeah, he gives it a little. <laughs> not sure if that goes, and then he just drops it in. Oh, we oh, did it, the yellow. Yeah. Wow. Maybe on this occasion it was justified. No, I, 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 I don't see it. I think that he would never have played the shot if he didn't go. Had to be tight. It was, it was definitely tight, but and look, but always give Tom for the yeah. win. This is for the title. This is for. Another one yeah. for Tom Cousins. I'll be the first to say it. Congratulations to Tom. Pro Series 1 winner. His third title in one month. Six weeks. Yeah, six, six weeks. weeks. Crazy. Crazy. Crazy stuff. But yeah. look, he's a deserved winner. And uh, he's, um, yeah, he's, he's getting a bit of a habit. Yeah, he joins Mick Hill and Chris Melling on three titles. One away from Shane Thompson's four. Still needs to wrap it up. That could have been played better. Yeah, just <laughs> stops in his tracks. Just give himself a little bit of work here on the final two balls. Beautifully played. Couldn't have played it any better. And this eight ball is for the title. 
you'd never have decided to took the eight ball in there. No. <laughs> But in it goes, Tom Cousins is the champion once again. A brilliant performance in the final, you have to say. Phil Harrison played his part, some brilliant finishes along the way and tried his best to stay with him, but the power game of Tom Cousins told in the end and he claims his third title with ultimate pull.